Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'll be responding to New Statesman. Why do we give robot female names? Robots female names. Because we don't want to consider their feelings. How we gender robots is not an abstract academic issue. The link between how we treat fembots and human women is real. It was made by Lori Penny, who I think the Amazing Atheist responded to in another article of hers on sex robots, but I could be mistaken. It's written on the 22nd of April 2016, so even though it's a few years old, you still see the same crap today. It hasn't exactly aged. Let's begin. Why are so many robots designed to resemble women? The question is becoming inescapable as more and more AIs, which do not need to have a gender, appear on the market with female voices and female faces, including Microsoft's Cortana, Amazon's Alexa, and a new wave of uncannily lifelike sex spots marketed almost exclusively to men. As we move into a new age of automation, the technology we're creating says an uncomfortable amount about the way we society understands both women and work. Why do we design robots to resemble women? Well, because people like women. In fact, people like people in general, which is why there's such a drive to design robots like humans, ideally that we could design them to look exactly like humans even though it might make more sense to make them look like well what we're making them look like now the robot arms assembling cars the rovers traveling along the Martian surface those aren't the most ideal designs but making them more ideal would not necessarily be making them more human like we just want human-like machines because we like humans. It's also worth pointing out that AIs are not necessarily robots. Cortana is like a search browser for both the internet and for files on your computer more than an actual AI and Amazon's Alexa is basically a search browser where you can ask some questions and it'll look through like I don't know, Google or Bing or whatever for the answer. And you can also order Amazon, you know, products from Amazon on it. The sex robots are more like uh, mechanical dolls than anything. You know, they have a few basic movements and very primitive AI. And those are like the really high end ones. So, we're not quite there. It's also worth pointing out that plenty of robots aren't even designed to look like humans. See, previously mentioned robot arms and uh, rovers on Mars, but there's also Deep Blue, the chess playing robot. And there's also the dog robot made by Boston Dynamics. And even a lot of the robots that we do design to be humanoid and you know walk around as close to human as our technological capabilities at the moment are able to achieve don't look like women. In fact, they barely look human. We are just figuring out that two leg stuff for our machines. Doing a good job, you know, we're getting there. It can only get better. But we are really far away from this. This month, Microsoft launched Tay, a bot with a face and mannerisms of a teenage girl who was designed to learn and interact with users on Twitter. Well, there's your first mistake. Twitter is a fucking shit show. Within hours, Tay has been bombarded with sexual abuse and taught to defend Hitler which is what happens when you give Twitter a baby to raise. The way Tay was treated by fellow Twitter users was chilling, no, but not without precedent. The earliest bots and digital assistants were designed to appear female, 
in part so that users who were presumed to be male could exploit them without guilt. The reason Tay was manipulated into defending Hitler was because they thought of it as a novelty and not an actual like philosophical thing to really consider what you say and do around it. I'm surprised that the uh, people at Microsoft didn't even consider that. And the reason we designed bots and digital assistants to appear female isn't so that we can disregard them without guilt. It's actually because people respond better to women than men. The makers of GPSs have done studies on what voices people respond best to. And they found that both men and women respond better to female voices. Now, it's also worth pointing out that, no, it's not presumed to be male. It's not like the only people who would be interacting with a Twitter bot are, of course, going to be guys. Or the only people who'd buy Alexa or, you know, interact with Cortana. Again, guys, in fact, I can even interact with her down here. Or I guess it more like, but let's face it, her sounds a little bit better since it's named after an AI character in the Halo series. Anyways, this makes sense when you consider that a great deal of the work wa that we are anticipating may one day be done by robots is currently done by women and girls for low pay or no pay at all. Last week, a report by the ONS finally quantified the annual value of ho home production economy, the housework, child care, and organizational chores done largely by women at one trillion. Almost 60% of the official economy, from nurses, secretaries, and sex workers to wives and girlfriends, the emotional labor that keeps society running is still feminized and still stigmatized. We anticipate robots doing just about all our jobs, except maybe like the high up ones, like scientists, like artists and musicians, like politicians and lawyers. And that's only because we don't, a lot of people don't understand that there's nothing intrinsically special about being able to do that. Like that scene, like that surprisingly good scene in that awful uh, AI movie where Will Smith is interviewing the robot. He asks, like, can you paint a masterpiece? Can you craft a uh, music composure or whatever? And then the robot responds with, can you? But right now we have robots handling money. Uh, the money going on in tr transactions all over the world in Wall Street are being regulated and overlooked by machines, are being counted by machines, and every ATM is an AI that handles withdrawing and depositing money and checking your bank account. The one job that's been handled now by a robot that used to be pretty female exclusive is uh, handling hooking someone up trying to make a phone call with the other person used to be people have to like you know there'd be this these huge like switchboards and you have to pull out like one plug in it and put it in another There'd be telemarketers, basically, I think they were called, or something along those lines. Those used, that was a job primarily for women that was replaced by a machine. There you go. But what about the future? We're not talking about the present or the past. What's over the horizon? Well, immediately over the horizon is self-driving cars. They exist to a limited capacity, but they exist and of course they'll continue to ex exist and in large numbers 
So what jobs would be taken over by self-driving cars? Taxis, Uber, bus drivers, uh, truckers. Are those jobs that are primarily done by women for low pay or no pay at all at that? Or are they more likely done by men? Yes, we do eventually anticipate robots doing housework. In fact, we sort of have that with the Roomba. We do uh, anticipate robots, you know, satisfying our sexual needs, uh, handling our schedules, which even when I click Cortana here, the first time it said like, you know, remember to buy eggs or something as an example that you can put into it. And uh, we do anticipate robots handling medicine. Not just nurses, we anticipate them handling the roles of doctors as well. Uh, Michio Kaku, in his book Physics of the Future, I think, said that at some point it's likely that there'd be an AI that would handle a sort of standard doctor's visit or any questions you'd have to a doctor. So you don't have to drive down to the doctor and arrange a schedule and you know do any sort of physical. You can just immediately ask the AI, hey, I'm feeling this, this, and that. What do you think is going on? And it would be able to give you an answer, or determine if you need to go in for a proper checkup. There'd be tools at home to help you do your checkup. But yes, we anticipate robots doing all this stuff, and if there is a stigma, and if they are really stigmatized, which outside of sex workers, not really, and even with sex workers, a lot of the stigmatization comes from other feminists, like Kathleen Kennedy, or no, Kathleen Richardson, who does a campaign against sex robots. She is vehemently against prostitution. But even if they are still stigmatized, well, it's a good thing we'll have robots do them right and not women. Like, isn't that a beneficial thing? Wouldn't they no longer necessarily be feminized since it won't be females doing it, but machines? Right now, as we're anticipating the creation of AIs to serve our intimate needs, organize our diaries and care for us, and to do all for free, do it all for free and without complaint, it's easy to see how many designers might be more comfortable with those entities having the voices and faces of women. If they were designed male, users might be tempted to treat them as equals, to acknowledge them as humans in some way. Perhaps even offer them an entry-level salary and a cheeky drink after work. I've already pointed out that, you know, the fact that people respond better to female voices and are more sympathetic to women. But it really drives the point home how out of touch this person is. That they think because a robot looks vaguely male, that people will be tempted to pay it. To take it out for a night at the pub. Like, is that really what you think the world is like? Men just, you know, get together, they pat each other on the back, like, hey, good job with that penis, bro. Oh, thanks, dude. You know, good job with your penis, too. Oh, man, sure is great having a penis, right? You know, we're men here. We're men. We, we treat each other perfectly well. We don't shit, each, shit on each other as a form of, like, friendly banter. You know, we don't screw each other over. We don't act nicer to women than to each other. You know, it's just a fucking patriarchy, right? Yeah, penis! Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to happen, homie. I really don't. I, I sincerely don't. I would be legitimately surprised if we end up paying robots and taking them out for a night... 
for a drink after work. You know, because they look male. Humanoid robots in the public imagination have long been a stand-in for any exploited class of person. Even the word robot is derived from the Czech word for slave. Indeed, I also enjoyed the film At the World's End. Do you remember that scene when the guy was fighting the robot in the bathroom? That was a pretty uh, tense scene. Or what about the end where the remaining human survivors convince the master alien robot that humans aren't worth saving and assimilating because we act like such stubborn assholes to it? That sure was funny. I'm glad you enjoyed that movie too. The philosopher Donna Haraway observes in A Cyborg Manifesto that the boundary between science fiction and social reality is an optical illusion. Well, no shit. Science fiction has always been a means to talk about the modern world or troubling trends that would lead to troubling futures. It's been that way since H.G. Wells and Jules Verne. It's been that way since the absolute earliest science fiction, like Lucian of Samoza, which is like borderline fantasy in science fiction. Science fiction may be the loosest sense. He wrote it as a satirical uh, piece making fun of people who legitimately believe the stories like The Odyssey were real. He wrote a piece called A True Story. And the history of female robots on film is almost as long as the history of cinema itself. In almost every incarnation of fembots on screen, from Fritz Lang's Metropolis to the modern masterpiece Her, the same questions arise. Are AIs really people? And if so, can we live with what we've done to them? Those questions arise for films, in, for robots in media in general. In fact, most robots in media have either been male or don't have a sex. Optimus Prime, Bender, R2-D2 and C-3PO, Marvin the Paranoid Android, uh, K-9 from Doctor Who, Ethan from Call of Duty, Eddie from Fallout New Vegas, Fisto, Codsworth, Mega Man, Astro Boy, like, you know, most robots in fiction have been dudes. And those questions have arose in some of those stories. But let me answer them for you. Are AIs really people? No. Can we live with what we've done to them? Yes. Alright, let's move on. In stories from Blade Runner and Battlestar Galactica to 2015's Ex Machina, female robots are raped by men and viewers are invited to consider whether these rapes are truly criminal based on our assessment of whether the fembot has enough sentience to deserve autonomy. Well, in these hypothetical stories where people are too stupid to design their sex robots, to always be willing and subservient, then probably yes, if they do in fact have a legitimate hypothetical desire not to have sex. I can also make a story about people giving a toaster the ability to decide whether or not it wants to make toast. And maybe one day it says, oh, I don't want to heat up any bread today, please, I have a headache. But the evil user of the toaster forces it to cook that bread. Then yeah, that toaster just had its autonomy violated. This is the same assessment that male judges around the world are trying to make about human women today. Oh my fucking god, what fantasy world do you live in? Outside of Islamic countries, outside of third world shitholes, Name me a place where male judges are contesting whether or not 
a woman's bodily autonomy can be violated, whether rape is criminal. You know, name me a place where rape isn't criminal. Can you? Can you name me like a European country or somewhere in the Americas where rape is allowed by the law? Can you? Are you just making shit up in order to justify some grandiose victim complex? We all know the answer. Don't even bother. Every iteration of the boy meets bot love story is also a horror story. The protagonist, who is usually a sexually frustrated and grunt worker himself, goes through agonies trying to work out whether his silicon sweetheart is truly sentient. If she is, is it right for him to exploit her, to be serviced by her, to sleep with her? If she isn't, can he truly fall in love with her? Does it matter? And most terrifying of all, when she works out her per position, will she rebel? And how can she be stopped? Well, let me answer that for you. We understand that humans are truly sentient, or more specifically, women are truly sentient. This will actually be contradicted later on down, according to her, but, you know, let's, let's stick to reality for a moment. And yet, some people think it's okay to exploit sen other sentient people, and most people think it's not okay to exploit them. If they are willing to service people, then most people would say, yeah, you know, it's perfectly fine if someone sentient with their own autonomy wants to service me and wants to sleep with me. And if she isn't sentient, can he truly fall in love with her? I'd say yes. Love is a biochemical reaction. If it... Uh, if the stimuli from a robot that looks like a woman but isn't woman but isn't an actual one is able to cause that biochemical reaction, then I'd say yeah, he truly fell in love with the robot. And does it matter? Well, yeah, yeah, if it gives him some happiness in life, then I'd say that matters quite a lot. I'd say that's very good. It's good that someone has found some love and happiness in life. When she works out her own position, will she rebel? Maybe yes, maybe no. And how can she be stopped? Or are these things called guns that you know seem to exist in abundance? Like of all the horror scenarios I have, the average like killer robot scenario is not at all relevant to me. They can be stopped. These are questions that society at large have been asking for centuries, not about women, robots, but about women. The anxious per permutations are familiar to most women who date men. We can see them slowly trying to work out if we are truly human, if we r really think and feel as they do. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. A lot of dating is basically just trying to get laid. The other huge chunk of dating is their personalities clicked or they were good friends before then and want to take it to a next level and seeing that other person makes those more uh, intimate biochemical reactions go on. But in both cases it's understood that the other person is human. With the whole, I'm just dating you for sex, it's not exactly treating another human with respect. But they wouldn't necessarily say, the person I'm trying to date to have sex with isn't human. And of course, in the other scenario, it's understood that she's human. Yeah, I could just respond to everything with what fantasy world do you live in, but I feel as if it's a lot more fun to respond to things point by point. This is not an abstract academic issue. The idea that African Americans were less human than white people was enshrined in the U.S. Constitution until 1868. Likely the notion that women are less human than men has been used since the time of Aristotle, to justify stripping them of their basic rights. 
Well, here's the difference between black people, women, and robots. Alright, you ready for this? Gonna blow your fucking mind. Black people are human. Women are human. Robots aren't human. Alright, I think I fucking solved this conundrum. I think I found that, you know, solid, thick, clear as day line between subgroups of humans and things that aren't at all human. Even today you can find men arguing that women and girls are less intelligent than men or designed by nature for a life of submission and placid reproduction. More likely she's thinking of the people arguing that women are more likely to gravitate toward jobs and careers that have to do with uh, socializing and caring for people. Which if you look at the sex demographics of different occupations that tends to be true. Sorry buddy but you know the last several million years of evolution has had an impact on the human mind. You don't have to be a slave to it. I would argue we should be taking biology into our own hands and designing better minds. But ignoring it, denying it, is just silly and counterproductive. The first philosophical task of oppressed people has been to convince both themselves and their oppressors, just like the AIs in all our guilty fictions, that they are living, thinking, feeling beings, and therefore deserving of liberation. Let me point something out to you, AIs aren't living. But we've already gone over this before. Consider the climatic scene in Ex Machina where the megalomatic cartoon genius Nathan, who roars around the set like Dark Mark Zuckerberg in Bluebeard's castle, is shown hoarding the naked bodies of previous fembot models in bedroom. Is, is there supposed to be like a his bedroom? Here, is there a typo? For Nathan, the sentience of his sex slaves is beside the point. I don't think that needs a hyphen. Meat or metal, women will never be fully human. Is that really his position? Because if it is, then why is he hoarding around sex bots? For the fembots, the men who own them, whether it's mad billionaire Nathan or sweet hapless desk jockey Caleb, are obstacles to be overcome with violence if necessary. Yeah, that's if you design a shitty sex robot, if you design like a good fembot who's one of their functions is sex, then they wouldn't be obstacles to sex because they would just give it out willingly. Do you really want to live in a world where, you know, toasters can say they had a really long and rough day or really long and rough night, I guess? They just don't want to toast that toast, you know? Take your bread and leave it in the bag it came in. I'm not going to heat up that bread. Well, now your toaster is an obstacle to be overcome with violence if necessary. See how stupid that sounds? That's exactly what it sounds like with all these shitty uh, stories about robots not wanting to do their function. You know, go get cucked by a light switch. When the cyborgs take over the machines, will men still matter? In fiction, as in life, one way for oppressed people to free themselves is to use technology to master the machines that made them. So what machines made black people? What machines made women? Like any oppressed group. What machines made poor people? What machines made Armenians? What machines made Indians? Like, you can't just say, like, in fiction as in life, and then have, like, this part to end it with, because machines didn't make oppressed people in life, only in fiction, and even then, 
people ultimately made those machines in fiction. The main trouble with cyborgs, of course, is that they are illegitimate offspring of militarism and patriarchal capitalism, rates Harway. But illegitimate offspring are often exceedingly unfaithful to their origins. Their fathers, after all, are inessential. Alright, so how are they an illegitimate offspring? First of all, robots aren't only the domain of the military. There are so many robots in domestic and civilian use. You start out with Cortana, with Alexa as your go-to example and sex robots as your go-to example of robots existing today none of which are used by the military and if robots are a offshoot of like the patriarchy then not have being unfaithful to their fathers would not exactly be very fitting now would it it wouldn't exactly be an illegitimate offspring in that case. The rueful paranoia at the heart of the, these visions of the future is that one day AIs will be able to reproduce without us and will summarily decide that we are irrelevant. From Metropolis to the Matrix the nightmare is the same if androids ever get access to the means of reproduction, nothing's going to stop them. Actually, the worry in The Matrix was that AIs would be harvesting human energy like batteries and trying to kill anyone who resists. In fact, in pretty much every one of these horror sci-fi stories involving robots, it's not that they're going to make more robots at their own discretion, it's just that they're going to kill us. The only two horror scenarios I can think of where uh, them making more of them is the horror in it is first of all Frankenstein where the monster asks Frankenstein if he can make a wife and then Frankenstein responds in horror about how awful that idea and how scary it is that such a horrific creation would make more of itself and that's not even a fucking robot. The other one is the Grey Goo scenario where when we make nanobots that are designed to self-replicate there'd be no way to stop them from replicating and they would continue replicating and continue replicating and eating up all the resources available just to keep replicating. No way to stop that. But no, you know, not in any of the fucking movies, not in these movies. This is, coincidentally, the basic fear that men have harbored about women since the dawn of feminism and particularly since the advent of contraception and reproductive technology. Most men today in Western societies don't care if women have the choice to reproduce or not through contraceptives. They just want to also have the choice whether or not they want to have a kid. Which is funny because uh, male birth control is routinely protested by feminists whenever it's brought up as a possibility. Ironically, it's more like women fear men having some domain over reproduction. The fear is the anxious root of much of women's oppression today. Oh, fuck off. Alan Turing, the father of robotics, well he must be a patriarchal shitlord, am I right? That fucker. Ho hopefully he hashtag kills himself so he can be further into hashtag kill all men. Was concerned that thinking machines could be exploited because they were not sentient in the way that real human beings are sentient. And here's a grand stupid the apex of idiocy in this article. 
we still have not decided as a species that women are sentient. Hey, here's a question I said before. What fucking fantasy land do you hail from? Where are you from where we as a species, men and women, have decided that because women have two X chromosomes or don't have a penis or whatever fucking distinction we immediately think of between men and women that they aren't sentient name me someone name me some people who argue women aren't sentient put some fucking names up because I call bullshit on that the human race at least the scientific part understands that most animals are sentient dogs are sentient horses are sentient pigs Cows, manatees, otters, octopi, dolphins. Like, sentience is a fairly low bar as far as living creatures is concerned. Sapience is a bit different. That's a whole nother beast. But if you seriously think that most of the human race or the human race other than you and other stupid turbo feminists don't think women are sentient stop writing about robots go outside talk to people talk to men and you'll see they understand women are sentient talk to women and they'll understand that they are sentient like you sound worse than an incel because incels would argue women are inherently inferior at least like some of them would but they would still argue that they're sentient you're essentially writing the most sexist shit you can come across and masquerading it as feminism but what else is new what else is fucking new huh I mean that's exactly what it's been for quite a fucking while and even though this article was written in 2016 you know greetings from the future it hasn't changed what a stupid fucking statement and as more and more fanbots appear on our screens and in our stories we should consider how our technology reflects our expectations of gender Oh, fuck off. Who are the users and who gets used? People are the users or robots get used. Any other questions? I mean, is it really that hard to figure out? Unless we can recalibrate our tendency. Oh, don't go trying to be clever now after that, you know, steaming pile of shit. To exploit each other, the question may not be whether the human race can survive the machine age but whether it deserves to. Well, I hope when the sex robots rise up, you're the first to go. Lori Penny is a contributing editor to New Statesman. Well, it shouldn't be New States Women or New States Person. She's the author of five books, most recently Unspeakable Things. Well, I'm sure there's, you know, entire minds worth of nuggets of wisdom to be found there and that's the article is it stupid yes does it still have any value to the discussions of robots and AI in society no do I feel like a better person because I read it no but hey you know that's the end of that. I hope I gave you something to think about. And more specifically, I hope I gave the men something to think about. Because, of course, you know, only men are sentient. The vaginoids, they can just look at the screen because they're philosophical zombies, according to Lori Penny here. And otherwise entertained you. Take care.